So um, from time to time, I do circuits that involve op amps or d different types of analog circuits, and they require a plus voltage and a minus voltage, plus 12 and minus 12. And a lot of people, um, that's kind of a foreign concept to them, especially if they come from maybe the Arduino world where everything is 0 to 3 or 0 to 5, right? And they can sort of understand 0 to 12, but this minus thing, just they just don't know what to do with that. And so they say, well, how do I get minus 12 volts? How do I, how do I get that, right? And you can sort of tell them, well, go buy a power supply that has plus and minus voltages on it. But, you know, they're building a circuit that they want to, you know, maybe put in a robot or something and take, you know, they don't have luxury of just something that outputs plus and minus 12 volts. It's just kind of a foreign concept. And this is how you would do it if you had a transformer, but transformers are so, you know, decades and decades ago, right? <laughs> Nobody does analog power supplies anymore. Okay, yeah, lots of you guys do, but you know, that's kind of a really, really old school. Everybody's switching power supplies now or battery powered or something like that, right? So so this is this is sort of, you know, that's sort of the old way to do it. And and this would be a foreign concept to these people who are asking these questions. Um, so I've talked about uh, what's called rail splitting um, in analog circuits where you take the plus voltage and ground and you put a resistor, two resistors of equal values, and you just call that center point their ground. You just you just fictitiously call it ground. You say, okay, well now this is ground, so anything up here is plus voltages, and anything down here is minus voltages, right? And you just, it's a battery powered thing. I've showed this before, it's very, very common. It's split rail ground, um, and you can use op amps, you know, if you have certain conditions met and everything, you could still use op amp, but people say, well, you, you can't use that because you don't have a stiff ground. There's, there's not a good, good way to get current into that ground because you have these resistors. You go, oh, okay, well, I have, I have a solution for that. You, you buffer it, you, you, you buffer your ground. You, you, you split the rail, but then you run it through a buffer or op amp or something with, with one to one gain and you tie that to your ground and I know it seems weird tying your output to a ground, but you are actually creating a ground and forcing that ground. And um, you have a plus voltages here, and you have minus voltages here, and you have, you have ground in the middle. So um, that's certainly one way to do it. And a lot of battery powered circuits do exactly this. Um, many, many, many. All right, so uh, let's maybe think about a different way to do it. Um, we have these things called DC to DC converters. Zoom out a bit. Um, so you have an input and an output. This one inputs six volts and outputs 15 volts, okay? Now let's say you're building a, a, a robot, okay? And I'm gonna have um, six volts, that's fine. I could have a power supply here that's six volts. And I could choose maybe 15 on the output, but then I need minus 15. Well, how do I get minus 15? Is there, is there one of these that I buy that outputs negative voltages? And um, there are ways to do that. Um, and I'm gonna show you a particular way to do it. But one way that you might try to do this and fail is kind of what the point of this whole video is today is w why you might get into trouble. So let's, let's talk about that. So uh, I can just kind of draw over here. So let's say I have an, a nine volt battery, okay? And, um, and then I put in another nine volt battery. This would be another way you could do it. You could have two nine volt batteries, okay? Plus, minus, plus, minus. And then you take this and you call that ground. And now you have plus nine here and you have minus, you have minus nine here, okay? So that's one way of generating plus and minus voltages, just using two nine volt batteries and, and wiring them up, wiring them up like this. All right, so um, what if I, said, okay, I'm gonna have a, a nine volt battery, okay? And I'm gonna run that into my DC to DC converter, all right? And I'm gonna output plus 12, okay? And I have ground, okay? And then maybe I could take this plus 12 and I can run that into a DC to DC converter Okay, but the output I will tie to ground and the ground will be minus 12. You could try to do something like that. And um, that might be an interesting way to do it, okay? 
so the problem with these circuits, though, are such. It, it kind of goes along with if you have a power supply, if you have like a lab power supply, and you have uh, maybe a dual lab power supply, and you have plus minus, and you have plus minus. If you if you short these two together, and you call that ground, then you have a negative supply, and you have a positive supply. Um, and this works because these outputs are floating. You can tie the plus to the minus and the minus to the plus. And so you say, well, that's what I have here. I have, I have a plus here, and I have a, a, a plus here and a minus here. Anyway, you, you can see that um, you think maybe you could do the similar thing by tying two DC to DC converters together, all right? Um, but the problem with that is, this is the DC to DC converter, okay? So the plus gets reference to this ground but the minus would also, the output has this as a ground and the output, I'm not saying this right. The input has this ground and the output also has this ground. And if you want to reverse these two, you can't do it because this ground is common between the two, okay? So this is what's known as a non-isolated DC to DC converter, non-isolated. That means that the grounds are common on both sides. Now, most of the time, that's the simplest way that you do this, and you will never hear the word non-isolated. That just won't be there. They'll just say, it's a DC to DC converter. But if you want to do this funny trick where you tie inputs to outputs and outputs to inputs, you can do that if you buy a DC to DC converter that is isolated. So, you can buy something called an isolated DC to DC converter. So here is a block diagram of one. And you can see the input comes in here, plus and minus, and the output is here, okay, plus and minus, okay. And this ground and this ground are not tied together anyway. There's no wire that connects these. In fact, there's a dotted line here that says this is an isolation barrier. And the way that they get isolation with this is they use a transformer, okay? Now, I said that transformers were kind of old school, but um, if you use very high frequencies and stuff, you can make these transformers very, very small. So even though it's using a transformer, it's using it in a very efficient way. Now, somebody with a leaf blower outside making a noise. Oh, well, okay, so, um, we have it isolated here, but you need to get feedback. And I've showed this with d uh, switching power supplies is that you use a, um, an optocoupler here to, to bring the feedback loop over and you can isolate these two grounds. So if you have one of these, then you t can tie the plus output, okay? So let me, let's see, let's kind of draw it down here. I'm gonna have, let's say plus 12 coming in, okay? and I'm gonna put it into this thing, okay? Okay, and on the output of that, I'm gonna have 12 volts coming out here and uh, ground coming out here, all right? But I could do this. I can tie this To this ground. And then what comes out here is minus 12, okay? I think is the minus 12 here. So I'm going to be using the ground output as minus 12. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a funny thing, okay? This is plus minus, this is plus minus, but I'm tying the <coughs> plus to this ground. And because these are isolated electrically, that plus 12 gets shifted down and turns into minus 12. All right, so if you're not confused by now, you will be later, no. <laughs> Hopefully you're not too confused. So I bought some, I bought some isolated DC to DC converters and they were super cheap. Um, so uh, this little guy here is the DC to DC converter. It's not very big. It's a 12 volt version. So let's look at the data sheet of this thing. Uh, this one happens to be a B1212S-1W, one watt. So it's a one watt DC to DC converter. 12 volts in, 12 volts out. 
and uh, the maximum current output is 83 milliamps. And there's a minimum. So a lot of DC to DC converters don't work unloaded. You have to have at least some load on them. And this one requires at least nine milliamps of load in order to work correctly, okay? So in a circuit, it's gonna work just fine because you're gonna use up that nine milliamps. But um, if you just use it on a test bench and don't load it down, you might get unexpected results. So we'll, we'll have to make sure we load it down to, to get a, at, least a, at least nine, uh, nine milliamps. All right, so 12 in, 12 out. Uh, that sounds good. And let's take a look at the block diagram here. Uh, it just says in and out, in and out, and there's a DC to DC, and there's just a block in between. So they call it V in and ground, and V out and zero volts. So they're not really, <laughs> they're kind of fudging on that, on that last one there. They're just saying, these two things are different. This is ground one, ground two, or whatever. So we can tie these things, um, like I said, and get minus 12 volts out of this thing. So let's do it. We have um, pin out, which is pin one. If, it, if we're looking at it like this, uh, bottom view, pin one is ground, pin two is V in, all right? And then we have V out and plus V out is on the out one. Okay, so uh, let's get a, Let's get some things hooked up here. Um, we'll need at least nine milliamps. So if we have uh, uh, 12 volts and nine milliamps, what kind of resistance is that? Okay. Okay, got out my calculator here. We've got uh, 12 volts. Okay. And nine milliamps, zero, zero, nine amps. And uh, we will need a 1.3K resistor. Let's say we use a 1K resistor. What is that? We have 12 volts with a 1K resistor is um, 12 milliamps. And this thing is good to what? Almost 90 milliamps. So let's use a 1K resistor. That'll be a nice fine load on this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we get. All right, I've tacked on a little 1K resistor here. I have a voltmeter across that 1K resistor. I'm bringing in 12 volts. We will hook that up now. Uh, hook it up right here. And something is in the way. There we go. All right. So let's uh, see what our voltmeter says here. It says we're outputting 12 volts. So our DC converter is taking in 12 volts and it's outputting 12 volts, okay? Um, so that's pretty boring. Um, but let's go ahead and um, we are going to tie the ground to the positive. Let me get a jumper wire to do that. All right. So I'm going to be taking our ground on the input. And I'm going to tie that to the uh, voltage output. So now I have ground to the voltage output. You would not be able to do that with a non-isolated part. And now I'm going to be putting ground on ground, which is now over here. And I'm going to be taking a look at this on, the, on our output. And what do we have? We've got minus 12. Yay. Okay. So if I put my voltmeter on the voltage going in, it is 11.98 positive, and voltage coming out is negative 12 volts. So I'm just gonna draw that one more time. We have plus 12 volts coming in, and we have ground, and that's going into our little DC to DC converter. <clears throat> then the output, we are going to be taking the V out, it called one V out and we called one zero, it called this in, it called this one ground, okay? We're going to take this and we're going to tie it over here and then we're going to measure here and we get minus, minus 12. So there we go. Um, so now in our circuit, when we go to build our circuit, 
we're going to bring we're going to bring this one over and we're going to have we're going to have plus 12 here, we're going to have minus 12 here and we're going to have ground here and we're all set to go. So we just had to add this one component and just make sure it is an isolated DC to DC converter.